Hello, my name is Shirley. I'm a mystic and a tarot reader. Generally do online readings for people, but I'm also doing free mystical training. And that's what this is about today. Uh, the next part of the mystical training is concentrating on the endocrine glands. And this is a book by Paul DuPont, Dr. Paul DuPont, The Endocrine Glands and Your Health. Now, part of the secret that I'm going to reveal soon in October, which is be different to anything else you've ever heard. I'm not kidding, I'm talking about optimum health, optimum growth, optimum health. It's it's a secret, it starts off with your physiology, okay? And it's something that uh, could revolutionize your life. Um, a lot of people don't believe, a lot of people don't want to believe, a lot of people won't even entertain the fact that we can actually heal ourselves and we can reach an optimum level of um, spirituality through this. Um, so let's first of all take a look at what the endocrine glands are. Um, these are your body's centres and they correspond coincidentally with your chakras. Okay, so the chakras, the endocrine glands correspond and the, the first chakra being the root chakra and then going up to the sacral chakra and then the solar plexus, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, third eye chakra and the crown chakra. Now, they all sort of have a role in the body, the endocrine system wherein hormones and special chemicals are released into your blood and you know, into various parts of your body. Um, and it's all governed by your brain, more specifically your pineal gland. OK, so let me just uh, read a little bit from this book so, so we can explain what I'm reading from, as I say, is the endocrine glands and your health. It says, the glands are the guardians of our health because they direct the organisation of our vital functions. They have a role in maintaining the equilibrium of the body and combating diseases. Combating diseases. Listen to that very carefully. They have a role in maintaining the equilibrium of the body and combating diseases. Okay, remember that. For this reason, it is useful to know they are functioning so we can have better health. More broadly, the glands, uh, the endocrine glands, um, indicate the balance between our inner being, consciousness, on, and our outer self, our thinking. Although the link between the endocrine glands and our psyche is still not well known. We will see what this link is and how our thoughts and emotions affect glandular secretions. I just wanted to remember that word, secretions. OK, write that word down, secretions, and see how it's spelt. It's spelt S-E-C-R-E-T-I-O-N-S, -E secretions, right? Very important you remember that. Why it's important to maintain a positive and correct mental attitude if we want to avoid becoming ill, right? So... A positive and correct mental attitude will help you avoid becoming ill. Extraordinary claims to make, I think, but uh, are they really? After all, you know, they do correspond with your chakras, but listen on, listen. The proper application of thought and emotions can prevent disorders in hormonal functions that implies that the glands are integrated into a system dependent on our subconscious. This system is the sympathetic system and we will discuss it. Yeah, uh, through this um, system, a hormonal imbalance can appear suddenly after a fright. Say you were um, in, a, in a situation where you were frightened, a hormonal imbalance can, can uh, happen that way. Um, or after a sense of frustration, you're frustrated, you're angry, hormonal imbalances. And then, um, you know, other things uh, to be seen gradually is a consequence of negative mental attitudes. Yeah. 
Some will always maintain that a hormonal imbalance leads to emotional and mental problems. And this is partly true because a person with a hyperthyroid condition will respond more rapidly than a person who has a hypothyroid condition. So overactive or underactive, in, in other words. Uh, however, where does the cause of a gland's poor secretion, remember that word again, secretion, okay, or its overreaction lie after a stress-related problem? How is it that we can so often observe disturbances after bereavement, the loss of a job, separation, bad news, or when there are professional or family problems? Why do those who tend to lose their temper most often suffer from nervous tension? Worry what says people keep saying, yeah. So talk about the negative emotions of the body here. It's time then to re-establish the truth, stop blaming the cause of our troubles and events and look within for answers instead of trying to put off until later the solutions to these problems by using replacement drugs and tranquilizers. So what happens is you get angry, you get mad, okay? Oh, and I'm so annoyed with the world. I ah Ah, and then something just, just breaks and you take a tranquilizer or you take a pill, you take something to calm you down. You take something for headache pain, you take medicine, right? Fake stimulants, replacement drugs and tranquilizers, which you don't actually need, right? When the cause of an imbalance is known, whether it is mental, emotional or psychic in nature, in fact, whether it comes from misguided desire, excessive materialism or bad habits, we must fight it. This means that though a healthy awareness and a good resolutions and through healthy awareness and good resolutions, um, we will need to enforce ourselves to keep thinking positively. Not easy to keep thinking positively, but it's good for your health. That's what they're saying, basically. There are frequent cases which the inhabitants of the glands, the imbalance of the glands has n nutritional causes. So you've got to watch what you eat as well. So one thing to maintain good balance, is watch what you're eating. OK, don't eat excessively. Don't lose your temper. So these are the first things you need to have that calm, that, that stability. And uh, then we're going to find out why. OK. The endocrine glands are responsible for your hormonal secretions. Remember, secretions, okay? Um, there's cosmic energy as well with the pineal glands and everything else. Let me just first of all start with that, with the pineal gland. It gives a rhythm to our life and helps us to regenerate ourselves psychically and physically by controlling the ageing process. It's all down to your pineal gland. The pituitary gland, which is in there as well, which I'm going to show in the diagram, is the conductor of all the body's organic functions and directs cellular growth to the multiplication and division of cells as well, the genital and reproductive functions. The thyroid directs the quality of life and functions like a thermostat, of arousal and inner metabolic heat, allowing us to better adapt over the long term in cases of stress. The thymus is the protector of the self, of its immunity and integrity. The heart calms and directs the circulation of the blood's vital force and soothes the nerves. The sopranal glands allow us to adapt when we are under stress by mobilizing reserves of energy and fighting infectious and inflammatory diseases. The solar plexus, you know, a meeting point of glands and an exchange zone commands, coordinates and restores while bringing together our material nature with our psychic being, right? So this is a crossover point, okay? That's your solar plexus. As a meeting point between the exterior and interior of the body, it is not a true gland, although the ganglia of which it is composed also secrete hormones. But here's that word again, secrete, secretion, remember it, secrete hormones, okay? It adds in connection with the suprenal glands uh, with which it communicates. 
Okay, the abdominal and pelvic glands, that is the liver, digestive tract, spleen, pancreas, kidneys, and gonads, through their hormones, support the physical and renewal and survival of the human species throughout the productive process. So, endocrine glands have a, a function within your body to maintain its health and well-being. Um, these equally important glands act on each other and self-regulate in concert. So it's like a symphony, you know, orchestra, you know, everyone's got their own part to play. Yeah. Um, nothing is left to chance. And the most remarkable thing in all this is the direct interrelationship between hormonal function and our consciousness, our emotions and psychological makeup. Yeah, there's a, a correlation there between your your uh, endocrine system, your glands and your hormones and everything and your psychological makeup, there is a direct link to these things. So why do they function so marvelously with such synchronicity, synchronicity and unity? Let's have a look. Now the endocrine glands and cosmic energy. Let's, this is like your sort of um, crossover point between physical and the cosmic. It all starts with your physiology, but there is a crossover point, like a link to cosmic energy. Let's read this. The endocrine glands have for a long time been considered to be the internal clock of our biological cycles. Okay. As a description, this is an insufficient analogy uh, because their role is not confined to noting the passing of time as it does a clock. It's like saying, you know, um, that a crystal within your mobile phone or a crystal within your computer, that's like saying it's just there for the passage of time, that your endocrine glands are just there for the passage of time. That's nonsense, yeah? But it's only part of, of what's, what they're really there for. So, um, if time did not exist in the cosmic dimension, we would have to say that they coordinate the cycles of organic life in synchronicity with the natural and cosmic cycles around us. Okay, These cycles should be viewed as a pulsating nature rather than spatio-temporal and having a vibr vibratory quality with reasoning, resonating harmonics, harmonics, yeah, resonating harmonics. Each note corresponds to what we call a human quality within, for example, love, peace, positive strength, and so on. So the endocrine glands basically turn cosmic energy into the physical and vice versa. They're kind of portals, really, bodies, psychic portals. Okay. And life goes through phases of destruction and reconstruction. These successive phases are confused with cellular multiplication of reproduction, where two cells separate or divide from collision to one another. So uh, all the cycles of life are controlled by our intelligence, which is the hormonal secretions of our endocrine, endocrine glands to accomplish its work harmoniously. So, yeah, the, the endocrine glands are uh, very powerful forces within them, which I'm going to talk about now in the, uh, the thing here. But first of all, we're going to look at the brain. And I'm going to show you what's in, what, what uh, glands are in your brain. I'm going to have a look at the pineal gland, first of all. What's its function? But we'll look at the other endocrine glands as well. But yes, uh, without the pineal gland, that's its receptor. You know, you wouldn't be able to uh, have a halfway decent life. And I'm going to tell you about the pineal gland. It is sensitive to light. The Egyptians did know about it. They would call it the Eye of Horus. And uh, they wouldn't really know that unless they uh, actually took the human body apart, so you were able to do that too. Um, well, let's take a look at, first of all, your the glands in your brain, what your brain consists of. And uh, I'm going to go further, look at all the different glands and what their, what, what their function is, what their role is in the body. Because, I remember I told you to take note of the word secretion, secrete, spell it out. S-E-C-R-E-T-E, -E -E. take an E off and you have what exactly? Right, so 
Here comes the video now, the PowerPoint presentation. Enjoy, and hopefully you'll learn a thing or two here. Okay, here it goes.